It's me, Zenobia Darling. You're listening to Hashtag Rockstar Life, the Coffee Break Podcast. Let's go. Where's my cold brew at? Ooh, what's up, guys? It's me, Zenobia Darling. I'm coming at you. Well, I'm coming at you from space because I'm saying the UFO because I'm a little tired of humans right now. But it is currently uh, 3.10 a.m. on a Tuesday. I have been working my fucking ass off these past few weeks. And I came home from work today. It's, it's kind of a rainy, colder day. And I came home and fell asleep at like 6. And I just woke up and I'm like, you know what? I got a podcast to do, so let's get into it. So I figured for this podcast episode, I would give you guys an espresso shot. So just kind of like giving you some backstory about the past few weeks and kind of why I'm doing this espresso shot. I have been doing some hardcore EMDR trauma therapy again. Just like really, I just, I like to work on myself a lot of times with therapy. I do have like, you know, PTSD and I do have some like chronic mental health issues that I do work on. And I just decided like it was time just to kind of work on it. I, I'm a huge advocate of therapy. I think more people need to be in therapy and they're too afraid of it, which I think is stupid. There's a lot of shame in it, but like there's no harm in working on yourself. So that's what I've been doing. And the past few months have been a little trying. There's some stuff in my personal life that I'm not going to get into on the podcast that has been coming up. So I've been doing that. Plus, I started working like a human job. You guys know I work at CCBC, um, you know, the gallery there and... Like, I've been hardcore, like, installing shows and, like, doing art stuff and just, like, also, like, being, like, fucking manly. Like, that's something, like, I I drill stuff into walls and that's, like, I love it. Like, I fucking love it. I'm definitely in a caveman era. So, because I've been doing that, I've been coming home and just, like, checking out and, like, I've kind of pulled back a lot from a lot of my social activities and a lot of my, my my social circle just because... I just really want to work on myself and there's just like, you know, I, I just, I kind of like to, I am very introverted naturally. And that's something that, especially when I'm in therapy and I'm like, I'm working on myself, I like to remove myself. And what I do is I come home and I watch trashy reality television. So I've been keeping up with Vanderpump rules. I've been keeping up with all the housewives except Potomac. They need to do something Potomac because it's, it sucks. Um, I've been watching, I've been keeping up with summer house surprisingly. And then I do like these deep dives and these rewatches of old reality television from the past like 20 years just because it makes me happy. One of the ones that I recently rewatched, I do it about once a year, is on a show called The A List New York. So, to give you some backstory and some, some pop culture history of this, The A List New York aired in 2011 on Logo. And it was kind of like Logo's attempt to make a Real housewife style reality show docu-soap, like, specifically with gay men. And th- it's there's two seasons of it. The first season is amazing. It is one of my top five favorite reality show seasons of all time. It is, it is so good. There's It's delusional. It's messy. It's trashy. It's chaotic. And it just it fires on all cylinders. So I figured for this espresso shot... I will I will dive deep into the A-list New York because there is so much there. There's so many just weird crossover with the Bravo world, just like the characters on them, just like also the other thing is I just miss gay people and have the grace. Like I'm around a lot of lesbians, which I love, but I just miss gay male energy. There's something about it. I'm around a lot of men who are you know, straight, quote unquote, but I just miss really powerful ridiculous gay men and the a-list new york filled that void another show i've been watching that i'm not going to talk about on this espresso shop but it will be coming out later is i recently bought mob wives chicago and let me tell you i love mob wives big Ange, may she rest in peace up there in heaven smoking a cigarette i love that woman but mob wives has always been one of my top favorites i think that show is people say like real housewives is shakespearean no mob wives is actually shakespearean because the stakes are there and it's just like it's a good show and mob wives chicago was a one season wonder they did i think in like 2014 and it's fucking nuts i mean i'll get into it later but like i'm halfway through this first season and i'm like ooh this is a good show so 
let's get into the A-list New York because they're... Ugh, this show just makes me happy. Logo was really, it was a cable channel that was launched, I believe in 2010, and they were trying to do what Bravo was doing, but specifically ge geared for gay men. So around this time, you had a lot of shows pop up on that channel. So you, that were like the gay versions of really famous reality shows. So you had, the, the most famous one, you had RuPaul's Drag Race premiered, it premiered 2010, was season one. I remember watching it back then. I fucking loved it. I mean, Chanel, Tammy Brown, Nina Flowers, iconic drag queens who I still love. So some like Chanel is probably my favorite drag queen to ever come out of RuPaul's Drag Race. Tammy Brown, same thing. But you had you had RuPaul's Drag Race coming on as like a reality show competition show. And then you had a gay version of The Bachelor called Finding Prince Charming. That was uh, oh, I never really watched. I watched a few episodes, but I'm not really into The Bachelor, but it was really good. And then they wanted to do a Real Housewives style show. So they're, so what they came up with was the A-List New York, and it featured gay men living aspirational lives in New York City. There was, so there's two seasons of the A-List New York, and then they had another uh, uh, another one in Dallas called the A-List Dallas. I remember watching it, but like I didn't really get into it because it was like, I don't know. Like Real Housewives of Dallas was kind of cringe at best, and they, uh, the A list Dallas had some cringe moments. There's only one season of that, but the A list New York. I remember watching it in real time, and I remember looking at it because it was with my friend at the time, and I'm like, this show is really like it's kind of good, and like this was a whole other time in Real Housewives history. I mean, it was it definitely had that early Real Housewives vibe. But the thing is, though, is, is they also have a level of delusion with many of the cast members on the A-list New York that gives it more of a Vanderpump Rules vibe. <laughs> I mean, there it, it just it has that chaotic messiness. And like, I will only I will say this: the only really A-lister on the show was Mike Ruiz. I mean, you, you know, he he was aspirational. He was really famous. He was a big name that they got. He was the only one that was big. And you and he just he just checked out. I mean, he was doing his own thing. He wasn't doing the cash trips. He would occasionally go out with them, occasionally do stuff with like have a lunch, have a brunch with the with the main cast, go to a bar. But he wasn't he wasn't doing the cash trip. And the rest of them were more like, yeah, they were aspirational, but I don't know. They had that delusion, and you're kind of like, are you really that aspirational? You're kind of you're giving me Kristen Doty vibes. And it and this premiered before, like, this was before Vanderpump Rules. So I remember, I always call this show Vanderpump Rules' gay older cousin because it definitely has that vibe. And, you know, there, there's a lot of Bravo crossover with it, which I fucking love. So let's, let's get into it. So right off the bat, there is, it starts with this theme song. And I always love it because you can always tell gay stuff from that era because they have a very specific like gay EDM like circuit beat and it's like this dude going I do what I want sleep when I want got all I need and I, and it's like I don't know and it's got that like bum bum da 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 it has this like really catchy like super gay like you listen to it and you're like this is gay. Like you, you can see this, like you can see people like fucking to it at a circuit party at like 4am in the morning. And which is another reason why I love it. So that's like the theme song and it, it's catchy. They don't have taglines, but I, I kind of wish they did have taglines. Cause that would be, that would be like really, really funny. So let's get into the cast. So I told you right off, like you have, you have Mike Ruiz, a very famous photographer. So, and you know, the only reason he's doing it is because probably Kathy Griffin and Lisa Renna told him, girl, you need to do this show. Like it's good. It's good real estate. Like that's how what Lisa Renna would say. And I mean, they weren't, none of them were really on there that season to plug shit. I mean, Reichen kind of did, but like, oh, so let's get into Reichen because like, ugh, he fucking is so delusional and just kind of like I don't even know. So Reichen, I'm not I don't even know his last name. He was on the show. So he so the whole premise was he was coming back from New York or go he was coming back to New York from LA because he got cast in a show called My Big Fat Gay Wedding um on like I it, it, that shit was not on Broadway. That shit was off Broadway, let's be real. 
And so he he's moving back, and he used to date Lance Bass, and he was on the Amazing Race, and then he was on the Air Force pilot. So he definitely he's re- he kind of is like a golden retriever. He's really hot, but you can kind of tell he's kind of dumb. Like he he's not really that smart. Um, and he's just but he's like hot and but it, it's not hot in a jack's way where he's like a fucking horny ape like you can tell that he he tries to have culture like he definitely he has what i imagine influencers have like right now like like he has that type of personality where it's hollow but he's like oh this is the best like you can tell like he he doesn't really he kind of reacts to culture and doesn't make culture. Whereas someone like Mike Ruiz is making culture. So then you have Raichin and he's in this relationship with this Brazilian model named Ronnie, who like, I fucking can't understand. Like no offense to anyone who speaks a second language, but like I have fucking subtitles on. I still can't fucking understand him. And he's just like a hot model who this is his first gay relationship. And clearly, you know, so he came from Brazil in poverty and went to Miami and started like, um, started modeling and then he came to New York and he started dating like Raichin. And I mean, they just, they fight, they, they're messy. They just like, you know, clearly they should have an open relationship, but they don't. And like the whole season is just like them fighting, you know, Raichin, I love you, Raichin. And Raichin's like crying and like shirtless and like, I just love him. And it's like, go, go, go. go. I hate gays like that. So you have that. So you have Rodney there too. So you have Raichin and Rodney, they move in together. Just a mess. So then you have a modeling scout who this is actually what kind of also got me into the to watch do my yearly rewatch of the A-list New York was because I was watching Summer House and Sierra was doing a photo shoot and I kept looking in the background because she was talking to one of the modeling people and one of like the people on set. And I was like, you look really familiar. And I kept looking and I said, oh, my fucking God, it's Derek from the A-list New York. I will say this much. Derek clearly quit smoking because he definitely looks a little different. But I mean, I'm not body shaming anything. I'm just saying he looks different. And I kind of saw that and I was like, hmm, let's do the rewatch of A-List New York. So that's kind of so he's a modeling scout. He's friends with Lindsay Lohan. He definitely is like a I don't even know. Like he's kind of he's a classic guy. He reminds me of my friend Dylan. He I don't know. I like Derek a lot. I I think he's definitely one of my faves. He definitely and he's also a good reality star, which I will say. Like, he definitely he definitely knows what he's doing. So then you have another guy. His name is Ryan. He owns a hair salon. He's a hairdresser. And he's like a blonde faux hawk. And he's married to, like, you know, a really rich black Wall Street executive, Wall Street bro, which I'm like, good for you, dude. And I love it because, and, and like, it gives me very Karen Huger vibes where Karen Huger is like, I married the black Bill Gates. Like, you can definitely see where Ryan married that guy and the guy wants nothing to do on camera like he's never seen and he's like fuck this shit i'm not going on your dumb show which i love too because and you can clearly tell like at the end they they, he says oh we we started the surrogate process and it's like that's made up you can definitely tell that's the other thing about the illusion about this show is like you can clearly tell that a lot of the the drama and the you can see them like just making shit up just to make a reality show, which I appreciate and it's very transparent. So and then Ryan has an assistant named TJ who's kind of a friend of, but because Mike Ruiz just like checks the fuck out um, of this of the show and doesn't really film with anybody, TJ kind of fills that role. And TJ is like he's a young like really skinny, like twink, like dude, red hair. And he's kind of sassy and he's there. I love TJ. He's probably my favorite. He's what I, he's, he is what a lot of my New York friends are like, like my New York gay men friends. He's what a lot of them are like, which I appreciate. And you can definitely tell like, he's not at the aspirational life yet. He definitely is on the pursuit to it. And, but he's also a good reality star. And then last but not least, we have this guy named Austin who is a he's an ex-model used to date Mark Jacobs and I can say this because I'm a fucking drag queen stand-up comic and I have been one before. He is what we call a trash fag. So, he just he likes to drink, he's really messy, he's really like just young, fun, dumb and full of cum. Like and just you know, not afraid to get messy, not afraid to be ridiculous. Definitely, I'm not gonna, there's definitely an alleged drug subtext. Like, you know, he definitely, I don't know. So you have Austin there. So that's the cast. 
It just, I don't know. It, it, it's a mess. It's a mess. But these cast members, like, they fucking make a good show, which I appreciate. So one thing I will say about the A-List New York that is something that I've been missing from the Bravo world is, I mean, these are New York City gays in 2011. They're not afraid to smoke on camera, and I fucking appreciate it. I mean, they're, you know, you have TJ and Derek and Austin. They're on camera smoking. They're on camera like, talking about cigarettes, they always have their pack of Marlboro Lights and Parliaments in front of them. They're always out the smoker's table. They don't give a fuck. And that's also kind of what I was saying about, about Derek is in the summer house is I was like, oh, somebody quit smoking. That's what I really said. But, but that's one thing I miss about, like, reality stars is no one smokes on camera or, you know, like, Dorit fucking smokes. Like, we all know Dorit is a smoker. Have we seen it on camera on Beverly Hills? No. But we always see pictures of it. And it's like, I miss... I wish people would get back to like, okay, people smoke cigarettes. Like, yeah, we all know the literature about it. We all know this shit. People still smoke. Why do we have such a, like, a, I don't know. Like, it might be good, like, health-wise. And I know, like, the younger generation doesn't smoke. But, like, I mean, I enjoy a cigarette from time to time. Most of my friends enjoy cigarettes. I mean, it's something that, I mean, we're not, like, chain-smoking, but, I mean... When we go out, we want a cigarette, you know? We've had a stressful day. We want to sit on the back porch and smoke, and there's nothing goddamn wrong with it. And if you're going to smoke, just smoke. There's nothing wrong. Like, seriously, it's like, you know, we all know the health effects, you know? Oh, well. That's what I love about mob wives is because they're not afraid to smoke on camera either. I mean, how many times have we seen Big Ange and Drita and Renee chain smoking on that show? And the only Real Housewives show anymore that still has the smoking is Real Housewives of New York City because there's something about New Yorkers and they're smoking. And... And that's something that, like, Baltimore kind of has it, too. But, but like, no one smokes on camera anymore. Like, if you're going to smoke, just do it on camera. Who gives a fuck? I'm not watching these things to be like, ah, oh, that person's a smoker. We all know Luann smokes. Like, you know, she doesn't care. She'll do it on camera. I mean, the one where, remember that D- December Berkshire County? She goes outside and smokes with her whale tail. Can you believe what Bethany said to me? Like, smoking her uh, Virginia Slim. Like, girl, work. But on the A-list New York, I mean, they're always smoking. It, it's like, I don't know. Like, Chris and Doty, like, man, Vanderpump Rules, they smoked. Early season, we saw Stasi smoke. Kristen, iconically ripping cigs every 10 minutes. Like, you know, that's shit I miss. Like, I miss that shit, you know. You know, a, like, it doesn't happen anymore. And that is one thing about this show that really makes me happy is... Just, like, the level of just unabashed smoking on camera that, like, I just, I just, mm, I fucking love it. But remember, I don't know, don't smoke, guys. You know, there's my little PSA. All right, ad break. I gotta pay for all this damn coffee I'm drinking and tea I'm spilling. It's me, Zenobia, darling. So, as many of you know, I'm more than just a podcaster, stand-up comic, and drag queen. I'm also a very accomplished painter and photographer, and you can check it all out on ZenobiaDarlingCreative.com. I have an art blog on there sponsored by the Harford County Cultural Arts Board. And just all my paintings, photography, you get podcast stuff. I have an art film that premiered in September that you can buy on there too. So make sure you check it out. It supports me, supports the podcast. All right, so let's get back to the podcast. And then the other thing that I really love about the A-List New York is... There's a lot of Bravo crossover with this world. I've kind of touched on it because Mike Ruiz is friends with the Mini Housewives and Kathy Griffin and just, you know, has photographed them and, like, has been in that world. But a lot of... There is, like, a lot of Bravo crossover because the the play that that Raichin is in, like, it's kind of alluded that Dina Manzo is one of the investors in the production of the play, which was there. And then... Out of fucking nowhere, Mike Ruiz go come, shows up to a scene and is in a pretty mess shirt. This was in 2011, and that's the thing. Erica Jane was fucking gay famous. Like, I remember seeing Erica Jane, I think it was 2012 or 13, um, in D.C. at, like, a gay nightclub. I remember seeing her, and she was doing... God, I remember that. And I remember they they used to play her songs at Abercrombie when I worked at Abercrombie. Like, that was, that was in 2011, and... Like, I re- and also I'll tell you this much I didn't hear good backstage stuff from her. I heard she was a diva and she was a bitch back then, so nothing really has changed. But, um, I, but you know, she, sh- but Mike Ruiz shows up in the, in the Eric, in an Erica Jane shirt. I'm like, I fucking 
love it. Like, I I love that. And then another Bravo crossover that I, I cl- actually, I forgot about this, but I was just, I was watching it when, when I was falling asleep this evening. And I, um, Tracy Young was on there. So the DJ Tracy, who, if this is a Bravo deep dive and only someone like me would really know this, this story, was DJ Tracy was... <laughs> This les she's a lesbian DJ and she had a fling with Kim Zolciak from Real Housewives of Atlanta before Kim got with that that football player with the cute ass that now they're having a messy divorce and she you know they they had a love affair and I was like because mm, Mike Ruiz came in a photograph her and I was like okay here we go I was like there's another brother so the so the, these worlds are, are are meshed together and that's something that I just like. I really, I don't know. I, I really appreciate that because you can, and you know, it is, it the logo premiered this show and they heavily marketed the show. I remember being in magazines, like everything that they were called Housewives with Balls and they really were marketing it as real housewives, but with gay men. So to have that crossover, I, I really appreciate. And it kind of, it makes it easy to watch to like a Bravo watcher because it's the same theatrics. I don't, I forget the production company. I didn't really check that, but you know, it has that feel. And it's like, if you watch a lot of Real Housewives, like, I mean, we all know my love of Real Housewives. I mean, go back to the podcast, read my thesis, everything. It's a show that if you're familiar with that world, you can easily digest it. And it's kind of like, um, I don't know. It, it, it's fun to watch because it, it's, it's, it has the same stuff, only it's with gay men. So, one thing I will say that I really fucking can't stand with this show, you know, we've all talked about, you know, I've talked about this extensively. I am in recovery from an eating disorder. And I will say in 2011 and 12, I was like really peak unhealthy. I was really peak sick with my eating disorder and definitely watching it. It, it kind of was like, you really see a snapshot of why a lot of gay men struggle with body image, why a lot of gay men are in recovery from eating disorders, because I mean, as much as I, I want to shit talk Austin, you know, he comes back, he was a model and he's trying to get back in the modeling world and he's not fat. Like he is still very skinny, very, he still has a, his modeling. I mean, he's not cut and jacked, but you know, he still is in good shape and he has a cute body and he's, he's, you know, he's healthy and I mean, they just trash his body. I mean, you need to lose weight. You're fat. You're chunky. And it was like the first thing. And it's like shit like that where I'm like, I don't miss that side of the early of the early 2010s. Like that side can stay back there. Like, you know, it's it's ridiculous. And I also think that plays into why they're all smokers, because like, you know, they're they're doing a lot of Diet Cokes and cigarettes. They're they're not really eating like you're not seeing them eat a lot. And it's like, you're kind of like, wait a minute, like this culture, this is the culture. And I come from this culture. So I, I'm going to say like, it's not okay. And, and that's part of the, this is part of why I love reality shows. Cause it really, when they're done right like this, they really hold up a lens to that. So if you really want to talk about, you know, a lot of the issues and like, I just saw where Oprah did something about, body shaming and body weight. And I'll tell you right now, as a comic, it's something that I really, I really tread lightly on with fat jokes. There is a way to do it, you know, like, but, and and Oprah even said this, it was a national sport to make fun of my weight. And it's like, I mean, yeah, I remember going to see Kathy Griffin and she's like, well, I'm happy that big fat Oprah's back. And it's like, yeah, I I get that. And the yo-yo dieting and that stuff. But I mean, we also have Ozempic and all this stuff, but I definitely think it adds to that that conversation because it's like, this is what these men, like, this is what, you know, this is the world that I lived in. Like, this was like a, this was something that I was around. And back then, like, I was super skinny. I mean, I was smoking. I was drinking. I wasn't eating. I, I was engaging in very unhealthy eating disorder behaviors and activities. And, you know, I had a, I mean, I was super skinny and, uh, you know, I can see that translate in that. I can also see the pressure and the body shaming of a lot of these people and a, a, a lot of the stuff I went like. It was almost it's, it's kind of triggering going back and rewatching. So it is something I don't like, but at the same time, I just kind of, that's when I put my like reality show scholarly brain on because I'm like, 
You know, we can make comedy out of this. We can, it, it's for research. It's for analysis. What is the societal commentary that this show is giving us? And I definitely think that's something that is worth looking. I mean, someone out there who is studying body image, specifically in the queer community and LGBT thing, they should watch this show because you're going to see why, you know, why rates of eating disorders are, I mean, let's just be real. I mean, eating disorders run rampant in our society. It does. And more men are affected by eating disorders than what it is. And um, just from, I've talked about this a little bit with Stoney before, but like personal experience with eating disorders with men, if you re- like, it affects men differently than it affects women. Women is, they're all about like the number and what do I weigh and, and that type of stuff. And, and whereas with men, it's all about like clean eating. Like normally if someone is very obsessed about like contamination in their food, um, a lot of them will kind of be vegan to kind of cover an eating disorder. I have seen that before. Um, clean eating. People who are, like, overly clean. People who exercise obsessively almost to the point of, like, it borderlines, like, an addiction. That is – there's there's definitely dis- – I'm not going to say it's an eating disorder, but there's definitely disordered eating. And, and you really see that in this show. You really see where there is, like, a – atmosphere there i i something I, I don't like but let's move on this is a comedy podcast let's move on let's let's make it happy again i am gonna clock this also with production there is a lot of frankenbites in this fucking show there's a lot of mismatched audio i was clocking it left and right there just there was a lot of shit like that and i'm like this is you know, you can tell, like, America's Top Model also has a lot of it. But this show, I was like, he didn't say that. That was not said in this scene. That That's that's a Frankenbite. I didn't like that. So there was that. And also the, the fashion. So there's a lot of Abercrombie. There's a lot of Hollister. There is a lot of Burberry. There's a lot of Ed Hardy. I just, I, I just, I love it because I'm watching it. And I'm like, and I, I mean, I, I, I was an Abercrombie model. I had a lot of Abercrombie. I'm like, I had that hoodie, you know, and it's a lot of like, a lot of like Abercrombie and Hollister polos with like the collar popped up. Like, do you remember that thing? And then like, you would wear like two polos. You would wear like a, a a hot pink one with like a white one or like a blue one with like a lime green and you would pop both collars. Like there's a lot of that shit happening on this show. And I'm like, oof. So Reichen hat definitely is, is falling into this like early two thousand tens like Abercrombie mold. Like he does it the the worst. Rodney does it. Like TJ and Ryan definitely like Ryan wears a lot of Ed Hardy, but he's definitely more of he's a hairdresser, so he's gonna be in all black. He definitely is more of like a refined New Yorker. Freaking Derek is wearing Burberry Gucci. Like he dressed very fashion. Freaking Austin is like cut off hoodies straight from Airpostel. Like real like come like just uh, like and there's a lot of stuff where i'm like i had those shorts i had that hoodie i had that polo i had that tank top it's like i'm sitting there watching i feel like i'm like you know i purge a lot of my clothes and it's it's kind of like a walk down memory lane because i'm like ah i miss this all right so oh god it's just oof. so let's get into some of the the highlights of the plot of this season Rachel and rodney's relationship just a fucking mess just a fucking messy mess just like oh my god like clearly they're not happy clearly I don't know if Rodney is doing sexual, fa- allegedly doing sexual favors for with Raichin so he does, so he can live with him because he's not paying rent. Raichin's probably like, you know, it's definitely paying for him. And they're fighting. And then like Rodney goes into Raichin's phone and sees where he was on Grinder. They fight about that. And Raichin, or no, like, so then Rodney leaves and then you get fucking Raichin, like, I'm just so sad. He's like shirtless crying with his cat in bed. Like Reichen is so overly emotional, like a fucking woman. And it's like their whole thing. It's so annoying. Even the other cast members towards the end were like, we're over this. Like we're over this. And also Austin and Reichen, clearly they have fucked before. Clearly they have some type of like romance happening. Like Derek flat out calls it out. He's like, they're definitely, it's like incestuous because there's like a big brother, little brother thing going on, but they like are into each other. And Raichin's always like, he has a cute ass. I wouldn't mind that ass in bed. And it's, it's like, 
clearly they're into each other, but also Raichen is a fucking flirt. I don't know. So you have that whole mess. And then like, of course, you know, Raichen, when, when Rodney breaks up and goes to Miami for a few days and Raichen's crying in bed, here comes Austin coming over in a cute little tank top and cute little booty shorts with a bottle of champagne and chocolate covered strawberries to cry in bed. I'm like, we all know what you're doing. If the cameras weren't there, you would be sucking his dick. He would be eating your ass and you would, you would be fucking. So let's just, let's keep it real. You know, if you weren't, if they weren't shooting a reality show, that is what actually would happen. So let's just, let's call that what it is. You know, I don't know if Rachel and Rodney had opened a relationship. They should have been. I think they're broken up, but it it's a fucking mess. It's just a fucking mess. They also early on they go to because it it take it's shot over the summer. So they all go to Fire Island, which is a big, I mean, I've been to Fire Island. I love it. I'm, I definitely am going to go to Fire Island this summer because I just, I need it. But so the cast goes to Fire Island for the 4th of July. And it's a big thing. Like drag queens go on a ferry and they like come into the harbor and it's a whole party thing. And like Fire Island is where New York gays go to party. So it's a big party scene. They have a huge like cruising culture and it's just like, it's just a lot of fun. And... It's it's in the, it's on Long Island. It's not quite as far out as the Hamptons, but it definitely is. It's the Hamptons adjacent, and it's all. I mean, it, it's it's close to like Sag Harbor and Sagaponic and all that and Montauk. So it, it's that it's out there, but it definitely is more of the gay Hamptons. It's also Cherry Grove, which is it's next door to Fire Island, but it's also the same thing as Fire Island. So they all go to Fire Island, and one of the most iconic fucking fights on all of reality television happens. This this fucking episode because Derek and Austin get into a fucking shouting match for the ages. I mean, so backstory on this early in the season, Derek and Austin do not like each other. And Austin is also very comfortable being naked. He, and that's also another thing about gay culture. Like um, there's not a lot of clothes and there is a lot of nudity and it, you know, it just is what it is. So Raichen is throwing this big house, this big house party in fire Island at his friend's house and there's a pool party. And you can tell it's like, it's a hot, humid summer day in the Northeast United States. I mean, it is a hot July day. It's sun. There's not a cloud in the sky. Sun's out. It has to be like 90 degrees, you know, no breeze, 100% humidity. Just, it looks hot. So they're all, they've been, they've been drinking all day long at, at the drag queen thing. And Austin, that's one thing about Austin. He definitely, he likes to booze. He likes to drink. So at this point, he's like fucking shit faced. Derek and TJ are laying out by the pool, and here comes Austin, strips his little blue speedo off, gets completely naked, and jumps in the pool. Meanwhile, Derek is laying in the pool, and he like gets out. And he's like, "I'm not gonna be there." And then so they start getting into it, and Derek comes back because he's a quippy New York guy. He's like, "It's better than the shitty at than the shit coming out of your ass, you fucker." And then they just get into it. And then Austin's like, oh, that's fine. At least, I, you know, you rep one Victoria's Secret model. You're so big. He's like, one. at least I have a fucking agent. Because that was the other thing. Because, like, the whole plot line of Austin is he's coming back. He's going to be modeling. And Derek fucking, I mean, he's a modeling scout. I mean, he's a, he's a very, like, big time modeling scout. And he's like, oh, really? At least I have a fucking agent. At least I can get one. And then he'd go back and forth, back and forth. So then Derek goes to get up and <laughs> and Austin, like, wasted, like, slurring his words, wasted naked in the pool. And he, so Derek just is like, fuck you. I'm getting up. Goes to walk away. And he's like, that's fine. Walk away. I'm going to get some real sun. And then Derek is like, well, I hope you get cancer, you dumb fuck. And then they just get into it. And it's just like, oh, my God. It's Do I have a video of it? I'll just play it for you guys because it is just, it is so fucking just like, oh my God, let's see. Cause I, I literally, I sent it to my best friend and he was like, what show are you watching? And I'm like the A-list New York. Here we go. He's so uncouth. I'm surprised the pool wasn't orange at this point now that you've been in for a 
You can hear me laughing at the video. Like, it's just like, that is the type of drama I want to see on reality television. Just like, oh, I hope you get cancer, you dumb asshole. Like, shit like that. It's so fucking funny. Like, no one fights like that. I just wish that happened more on reality television. Because you could tell that was a real fight. And they are sassy, quippy. Like, Derek is a sassy, quippy New York gay. And and was giving it back to Austin. And I, oof. I love it. And then TJ got involved because I fucking, TJ is the fucking best. Like there is definitely, there's a picture I have. I took this because when they go on the main trip, TJ is sitting in Ryan's like Rolls Royce or maybe it was a Porsche SUV like backward, not buckled up on the seatbelt and they're having a conversation and it's like shit like that. Like TJ is just the fucking best. Like I wonder, let me, I'm going to look up TJ right now and see what he is doing because like, he he just, I really enjoy TJ. He just, I wish he would come back on reality television. Because he, he was that, he was that good. But yeah, so that, that, that fire, that fire island fight was just like the, the best. And I remember like, I remember when the A-list New York cast would always do, they would always come to DC and Philly for like, club appearances because that's the way reality stars made money back then and of course you know they're all doing that i remember always hearing that they were they were cool i remember always hearing that like Derek, tj and um ryan were always like always the best so so then it moves along and then another they actually have a physical fight on this show so austin and rodney get into a fight and because it's their bullshit relationship happening like Rachel and rodney have them all come to dinner and they just to tell them they're getting back together after like they just had like a horrid like separation and they're like we want your support and they're all like fuck this so then right shit no so then rodney throws a drink on austin and then austin jumps over the table and gets in rodney's face and then just they fight and it's like a fucking brawl that was some mob wife shit like Drita Devanzo came out of Austin and it was ooh like I don't I don't do fighting I don't do that I'm not physical like that like you fight with your words have some class and elegance but every so often when a drink gets thrown on you punch that fucker and then and then Austin was like yeah get on your back like a fucking bitch and then TJ was like oh it made my nipples hard that's what I love about it cuz they also comment on it like like fucking gays like ugh. so yeah it's it's definitely worth it there's some other squabbles like there definitely is Raichin trying to sing a song he wrote about don't ask don't tell called into the sky and Raichin just can't sing and is just fucking delusional about it and i mean it it's it's up there with like some of the Sheena Shea and Luann De La Sepp's studio and Kim Zolciak studio time. I mean, it's, it's horrid. It's horrid. So then I'm going to, I'm going to end this espresso shot with this. So we get a reunion episode. There's one reunion episode and it is hosted by none other than Wendy Williams, who uh, you can tell is eating this up. She definitely, she knows what she's doing. She cashed the check and she's like, cha-ching, cha-ching. I'm going to be Andy Cohen and it's fucking Wendy. It's 2011 Wendy. I I love Wendy and she's, she's here for it. She, Wendy loves her messy gaze. She loves all the fighting. She loves the drama and she is going in like she is going fucking in on all of them. So there are some nightclub 
in New York City. I think it was called like Amnesia or Amnesty or some bullshit like that. And so you get Wendy and she's like in front of them. And you can just tell when Wendy does like the, the intro of the show, you can just tell the cast is just fucking, they're over it. They're over it. And Wendy at this point was not the Wendy. What Like she really started getting a list and going big. Like in 2000, like I would say like 14, 15, it was definitely was like, I know like season three and four of the Wendy Williams show is when it really popped. I mean, I've been, I've been listening to her since the radio. Like I love Wendy. I, I've, I've talked about obsessively about Wendy Williams, but so she really wasn't like, she definitely had her talk show at this point, but she also was doing these gigs to get more of a profile on TV. And it's something people, it's something you do like, you know, like so occasionally on mob wise, you have like Joy Behar host it. But because Andy Cohen was hosting the reunions and it was they was following that format, they wanted someone that had that had that like pop culture journalistic quality that Andy Cohen has. And, and Wendy Williams does it. And also Wendy Williams has Andy Cohen's messy quality. I mean, like, you know what? I haven't talked about the fucking like lawsuits happening with Bravo, but apparently Leah McSweeney, who I'm just gonna say this. Clearly, her pussy thought shots that she's been hawking on uh, OnlyFans aren't paying the bills because that bitch is suing Bravo. I'll just say this. Yes, Andy Cohen most definitely does cocaine, allegedly. I mean, we all know that. Who gives a fuck? Like, you know, people do people do cocaine. People do drugs. People smoke cigarettes. People do stuff. And you can do... People have the, the freedom to play around with consciousness and to play around with substances. And as long as you're not messy about it, as long as you're safe about, I mean, who gives a fuck, you know, like, and and it's, it's not like that's new information. Kathy Griffin came out with it like 10 years ago. So it's like really Leah McSweeney, you're looking like a real jackass. So, and, and she blocked, uh, she blocked my best friend because he called her out, but yeah, so that that's happening. So, but you know, and then, Some of the other things, I'm just like, this is bullshit. Like, leave Andy alone. Like, I don't like Andy. I think Watch What Happens is uh, one of the most unwatchable TV shows that ever did. And he fakes the ratings of it because if you watch, if you watch it on like, um, on, I mean, we have Comcast. Like, when I watch it at my mom's house, like the real, the new Real Housewives episode or like Vanderpump Rules episode, it'll be 90 minutes because it's an hour of the new show and then it's watch what happens live, but it's billed as Vanderpump rules. So, so he's fudging the ratings. Cause no one's watching that, that dumb show except Kathy Hilton. Like, let's be real. Let, let's really be real. You know? So I have my own faults with Andy Cohen, but this whole thing with Liam McSweeney is just real. It's, uh, it's, it's stupid. It's full of fucking shit. And I'm, I'm tired of seeing, you know, because of Bethany Frankel having this reality reckoning, all of a sudden we keep seeing sober reality stars. I'm not watching Bravo to see people living morally upstanding lives. I'm watching people be horrible. Like, I want to see people living a full human experience, being messy, you know, going through stuff, being real, drinking. People drink, and sometimes they drink too much and get messy, and and, you know, I want to see that. I want to see people circle in the drain, you know? Like, that's why I'm watching these shows. I'm not watching these shows to build my character. I, I, I do my own stuff for that. Like, I'm just, I'm so tired of this shit. Like, I'm all happy people are finding sobriety and shit. But, like, if you're going to be a fucking reality show, fucking drink. Like, you know, do drugs. I want, like, that's what I want to see. Like, why, why are we fucking with this? Like, like, we all know that this shit happens. Like, you sign up for that on a reality show. If you can't handle it, if it's unhealthy for you, then don't be on a reality show. But if you're going to be on a reality show, you know, clock in. Do Drink a little too much. P- do some drugs behind the scenes and it play, and the behaviors play out. Like, that's okay with me. Like, for real. So let's get back to Wendy Williams because... So Wendy Williams is on there and, like, you can just tell Mike is over it. He does not want to be there. Derek and Ryan over it too... You know, they they keep taking smoke breaks they, they, and they just keep getting up. We're taking smoke breaks. And you're like, wait a minute. You're in the middle of production. Like, you know, that shit doesn't fly on Bravo. That shit doesn't fly with with Housewives. I remember there was a, a reunion with Real Housewives in New York City where Ramona just like they were talking to, I think, Kelly Corinne Ben Simone on the other couch. And Ramona just like got up to stretch and used the bathroom. And Andy's like, where are you going? She's like, I, I got to pee. I, I didn't think the camera was on me, so I'm going to go. And she's like, can you sit down? Like, 
But they just were saying, fuck it. They just got up and left. You could tell they were like over it. Mike's over. And Wendy just flat out said, Mike, what the fuck are you doing here? And Wendy's giving it to Austin and giving it to Rod, Reichen and Rodney. And, and like shading Ryan for his eyelash extensions. And it's just, it's so funny. Like he, but she is giving it. She is like really like, that's something about Andy that I really appreciate. Like it it comes out on the housewives. It really comes out though on summer house and especially Vanderpump rules is he will come for these people and he doesn't give a fuck. I recently watched the reunion of season two and three of Vanderpump rules. And clearly they hate Kristen and, and he's like giving it to Kristen and you can tell he's like, you're beneath me. Shut the fuck up. I'm the conductor of this show. And he gave it to him and was holding him accountable for their bullshit. And Wendy was doing that. And it was, it was glorious to see. I really appreciated it because it's like, that's what I like in a reality show is when someone at the very end is like, why did you do this? Like what, you know, account for your behavior. Cause it's, it's problematic. Like it's messy. Like, why did you do that? And he was, she was doing it for all of them. And I, I, that's something I appreciate. Okay. I will tell you this about the Wendy Williams documentary. I, I almost couldn't watch the second half of it because it is so dark. I love Wendy Williams. It was really hard to put that through my, my comedy filter because it's it's really sad and it's like I don't know what's happening. I, I kind of checked out of it and plus like the news cycles like so fast that I'm like that happened weeks ago and I'm like but it really happened two weeks ago and I'm like what the fuck. But like with Wendy Williams like I, I just I don't think the Wendy Williams that we know and love will ever be back. I, I think that that person is gone and I think that's really sad and I think that Wendy deserves to live a private life. I mean she'll probably be back. I mean I think she could do a podcast. I think she definitely could be back on on some type of media, but as um, I think the talk show, Wendy, I think it's done, but I have been going back and rewatching Wendy's best of clips on YouTube. And I miss her. There's no one that does like Wendy. She was talking about Kanye West and all the gay rumors and her shade of Mariah Carey is gorgeous. I fucking love it. So it's just, it's been a good time. And you know, I'm definitely, I don't know. This is what I do. Like when I, when I I deal with shit, I mean, I, I've been making a lot of fucking badass art. I've been really working on myself. Like I definitely am punking out a lot. I have a platinum blonde mohawk. Like I full on mohawked my hair. I normally faux hawk it, but I full on mohawked it. And, you know, I've been starting to really kill the game. And, you know, and when that happens, I watch a lot of reality television and I, I analyze it and I spit it out as comedy. And so that's what this is. So I hope you guys enjoyed this espresso shot. Go watch the A-List New York. I mean, you can buy it on Amazon. It's like, I don't know, it's like 15 bucks. It's worth it. Like, this, the first season is worth it. I mean, I, I haven't watched the second season in like 10 years. I don't really remember it being that memorable. But, I mean, it definitely might be worth a shot. But definitely go watch it. Go, you know... Just watch. I mean, it's it's a good if you if you have a slow weekend, definitely. And like I, so in my bedroom, I have a movie projector. So I have a projector hooked up to an Amazon Fire Stick, and it projects on a huge screen on above on the wall. And I lay in bed and watch movies, and that's how I watch it with a sound bar with surround sound. So I give a I have a full cinematic experience when I watch this show. And if you have if it's a slow rainy weekend take an edible, you know, take some, take some pot hits, maybe do some mushrooms and just watch the show because this one delivers. So with that, I'm going to, I'm going back up to the UFO guys, make sure you like, and subscribe and all right, peace out guys. Mwah. <laughs>